Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. Before we get started with today's video, I just want to remind everybody you can become a member to the channel right here on YouTube for just 99 cents. It gives you some extra perks and things like that, so take a look at it if you really enjoy the channel. You can also catch me over on Utreon, Patreon, Odyssey, and Rumble. You can also become a member on Utreon and Odyssey as well. Check that out. Also, I would like to welcome my newest member, John. He's joined yesterday. Thank you so much. Every member that is a part of this channel, you don't know how much it means to me that you like my channel and you want to become a member. Thank you all so much. Now, about a month ago, we got news that Fedora was going to be removing H.264, H.265, VC1, VA API, video codecs and support from the operating system. What does that really mean? Well, here's the problem. Fedora is based in the United States and there could be issues with MPEG LA, which is the company that owns the patent to H.264. That's where the problem lies. Them actually implementing it in the operating system could cause patent issues down the road. And because they are based in the United States and it's under United States patent law, they basically pulled it to protect themselves. And if you paid attention to the news, you also saw that OpenSUSE followed closely behind. Now, if you're a user of Ubuntu, you see that they haven't done anything. That's because they're based in Europe. So you don't have that issue. One of the main problems you're going to have is that you're still going to be able to play video and audio on your system, but it's not going to be GPU accelerated anymore. It's going to run directly from the CPU. Now, having said that, what's going to happen is if you're a laptop user, you're going to see that your battery life completely goes to crap because you don't have everything going through your graphics anymore. It's all going through your CPU. But as always, the open source community reacted immediately, found a solution in RPM Fusion, which is a secondary repository. It's almost like the AUR is to Arch. It's just a place to get different applications and software that aren't available through regular channels. Now, the package that's on the RPM Fusion is from Europe, specifically France, and it's not subject to the same patent rights as those in the US. The package that restores the support for the H.264265 and BC1 codex is currently ready and under review. So a lot of Fedora users may need to install RPM Fusion. Now, what I want to say is if you're somebody that's not comfortable with doing that, or you're somebody that's using Fedora and you haven't really got into command line or download or installing codecs or something like that, because it used to be easy. They asked you at the beginning of the install, hey, do you want to put media codecs on here? You click that option and you didn't have to worry about it. But then you would have to secondarily go install RPM Fusion if you wanted other packages. What if you just want to download an operating system that's based on Fedora, that's going to have the codecs, it's going to have RPM Fusion set and ready for you to use, and a lot of tweaks that just make using the operating system flawless out of the box. Well, then you just go over to ultramarinelinux.org. I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. Now, Ultramarine Linux is a Fedora-based Linux distribution designed to stay out of your way and it's easy to use out of the box. What they wanted to do was take the beauty and stability of Fedora, but then make it to where when you boot it into either a live USB or install this on your machine, you're just ready to go. You're ready to go work. You're ready to go create. You're ready to go use your computer as opposed to saying, okay, I have a checklist of things I have to do after I install Fedora, and this is what I need to do. With Ultramarine, you don't have to worry about that. It's there. It's ready to use. It is easy. It is what Linux Mint is to Ubuntu. Ultramarine is that to Fedora. It just makes it easy to use out of the box, and it's quite beautiful as well. But you come down, you've got a little bit of information here. Ultramarine Linux is a Linux-based operating system designed for your own personal workstation or battle station, designed to be 100% bug-for-bug compatible with Fedora. So if you like that dependability of Fedora, you will like this. It's developer-friendly, and it's got same defaults of things that you can use. You've got a good wiki, you've got packages, and then you've got download up here. If you click on download, it brings you over and they give you a lot of different editions. You can get the flagship edition, which is the Budgie Desktop from Solace. You got GNOME, Pantheon Edition, which is what you see on Elementary, 
and then a flagship edition but immutable powered by OS tree so if you're somebody that wants an immutable operating system ultramarines got you set and you're ready to go now they do have a deprecated build of the cute fish desktop environment I covered this about three months ago it was a decent little distribution but it is deprecated it's not being updated so if you want to take a look at it you can but I would not rely on it as a daily driver at this time when I did my previous review on the cute fish edition it hadn't been deprecated yet so now what we're going to do is we're just going to zip on over to the desktop and if you download ultramarine throw it on a usb or open it in a virtual machine this is the screen you're met with it's got a beautiful introductory desktop for you it does have a little pop-up that says do you want to try it or do you want to install it i'm just trying it right now i haven't installed it but you can see it's got a beautiful wallpaper you've got one panel down here on the bottom you've got your raven notification panel so if you click this little arrow your little notifications come out over here you can add different applets to it you can check your notifications right there and then you can do all kinds of things over here if you're playing audio or video inside of a browser it will have controls for it over here and it'll let you know that they're playing do you want to play some music what different devices do you have hooked into your system so i like the raven it makes things real easy to get to and accessible and i do like that it pops out a little bit and gives you a little area to work right here i really like that so let's go ahead and close raven then you've got date and time down here power sound internet connection and then of course i'm using a us keyboard and i do have a scroll on my mouse so i can come over here and scroll between my desktops if i want to you've got four of them to choose from and then you've got your application manager now first thing i want to do is go ahead and right click you've got budgie desktop settings right here so let's go ahead and open that up and with the budgie desktop settings let's make that full screen so you can see it it kind of gives you style right here you've got your widgets icons cursors notification position dark theme built-in theme or animations and i don't know if it changes no it comes with the dark theme out of the box but you can change these over here widgets if you want to change the way those look you can change it right here same thing with icons cursors and notification position then you have your desktop you've got your desktop icons if you've got icons that are on the desktop and you don't want them there just turn it off they'll disappear that's completely up to you and that's how you want to set up your home screen what you're comfortable with if you want icons there put them on there and then of course what will show on the home screen you've got your home directory trash if you don't want your home directory there just shut it off trash trays there or you could do it either way click policy double click to open you can change that to single click if you would like and then of course your icon size can be small or all the way up to massive that's completely up to you i'm going to go ahead and leave it on normal number of virtual desktops you can add more there if you want to and as you can see it shows you the different ones down here let's go to desktop two i've got seven now or you can run it down to two if you want to that's completely up to you and then fonts and then adjusting and adding things to your raven over here is all right here you can show a calendar widget show sound output widget microphone media playback all that right here you can adjust that to however you want it and then you've got your windows you can attach a model dialog to the windows button layout center new windows automatic tiling is on like if you drag it up here it'll automatically tile it you can go to the half but I'm going to show you something really cool with tiling here in a little bit that you can pretty much customize the layout of what you want with tiling. Then your bottom panel, you can add applets here. You can remove applets. You can pretty much have control over everything you do down there. Create new panel. And then, of course, your auto start. Welcome to Ultramarine. You can leave that there or you can take it out just by hitting that. So we're going to go ahead and close out of that. And then we're going to go ahead and open up the system settings. And let's go ahead and maximize that and you're probably familiar if you use gnome at all you're going to be familiar with the settings that you have here you've got network bluetooth background if you would like to change the background i like the background that comes with it out of the box but let's say you wanted to go with something like that and there's the new background i actually like that so i'll leave that up there notifications multitasking applications privacy online accounts you're going to have your regular linux settings over here and then let's go ahead and go to about it's ultramarine linux we're looking at budgie version 10.5.3 
It's Ultramarine Linux 36, 64-bit, and it's using the X11 window system. And then, of course, we're in a KVM. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Now let's come down here to the app menu. Now you do have your apps set up like this. Now if you want them more of a list view, just come down here and click your list view. And then you've got your list right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch it back to grid. You've got archive manager. You've got budgie control center we just looked at. Budgie desktop settings. Connections. Clapper. Cheese. Contacts. And then files. Let's go ahead and see the file manager. I do like the aesthetic that they're using. I like the icons that they have. I like the folder views that they have here. Kind of a see-through folder. I like it. It looks good against the dark background. But it's just the files file manager. You've got your usual suspects over here. You've got your home folders right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Like I said, it's lightweight. stays out of your way and just lets you get things done. And then we come over here, you've got Firewall, LibreOffice is installed out of the box, you've got your Image Viewer, GNOME Clocks, Light GTK settings, System Monitor. I want to go ahead and pull it up and see what kind of resources we're using. Let's go with Top. And right now, at rest with just the terminal open, you're using about 900 megabytes of the two gigabytes I have issued to it. Now, once you do install it, it's going to run a little lighter for the simple fact that you're not going to have some of the operating system running in RAM. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that and go back down here to the app menu. Let's go back over to where we were. And then you do have weather, Wall Street control, system monitor, and then you have the window shuffler. I really like this. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and show it to you real quick. This right here gives you shortcuts of how you can move windows around the screen. So let's say you wanted this to go down in the bottom left of the screen. You just hit control, alt, one and it drops it down to the bottom half of the screen. Or if you wanted it in the top right, control alt nine, it moves up there. If you wanted it down in the bottom half, you can control half two, and it would drop it back down there. But what you can do here is actually customize these layouts. You can resizing and moving windows in a custom grid. You can turn that on, set up how many columns you wanted, how many rows you want. Now this right here gives you a lot of power over tiling on your desktop. And I suggest that you go through and kind of play around with it and set it up the way that you want to. Now we'll close out of that. You can go up here. You can have custom layouts. They're set on right now. And toggle layouts, quick list, and manager, super alt and left. So let's super alt left. And it'll bring up layouts right here. And you can come in here and add a new. Name it. Set it up the way you want it to work with all the windows that you have open. And you're going to be good to go. That's one of the things I really like about Ultramarine. It gives you the ability to customize the tiling feature that you have on Linux. I know that the tiling feature in Pop! OS is very popular, and a lot of people try to bring that shell script over to other distributions. But I think with the Window Shuffler, it actually gives you a little bit more power and gives you a little more customization over what you want to do with your desktop. Then you can come here and set your window rules. You can turn those on, grid, XY, span. You can pretty much set that however you want. Then you can set up your applet. And then, of course, miscellaneous. You can set a top margin, left and right margins, bottom margin, window padding. It just gives you complete control over that. And I love that in a Linux distribution. So I'm going to go ahead and close out a window shuffler and come back down to the app menu. And like I said, you have some of your base applications now what I want to see is how we install software so let's go ahead and open up their software center and it pops up it's gonna take a little bit to populate and once it loads up it'll look quite familiar to a lot of people let's go ahead and make it full screen up here you've got a little scroll that grows through and shows you different suggested applications then you can scroll down here and you've got editors choice news and updated and then we can go back up to the top you can create document viewer and then of course it'll show you your installed and your updates now what I want to do is do a search real quick and we're gonna look for something like GIMP go ahead and let it search the repositories and there's GIMP let's go ahead and click on it and then it'll bring up some good information it'll give you screenshots it'll let you know whether it's safe or potentially unsafe this right here says it's safe and it'll also, if it says it's unsafe, you can click on it and it'll explain the reasons why it's unsafe. Right here it says it's safe. It's been reviewed by your distribution. It's got auditable code and the license it's under and the source. Now if we close out of this, you'll look up here. It'll say Ultra Linux Package, Ultramarine Linux Package. 
and then you can click on it it's also available in the flat hub now what you will notice is sometimes when you look up applications you'll come up here it'll say rpm fusion repository because the rpm fusion repository has already been installed and you don't have to worry about that what ultramarine linux is it's not just fedora with a different desktop it's fedora made easy it's fedora with all the things you're supposed to do after you install fedora already done and then all you've got to do is use it that's the easiest way i can explain it so what i'm going to do is go ahead and close out of this let's go back down to the app menu i think we've pretty much looked at everything in there that's a quick look at ultramarine linux beautiful distribution solid fedora base with all the little things taken care of for you all you have to do is download it run it in a virtual machine or install it and just use it that's it you don't have to worry about codecs not being there because of a patent issue they're already there because they're based outside the united states just remember that if your linux distribution is based in the u.s more than likely that h264 and 265 support is going to be gone those that are still based in europe you don't have to worry about tell me what you think is ultramarine linux something you might download throw on a usb put in a virtual machine and take for a test drive let me know in the comments below please do me a favor before you leave today please like subscribe or follow my channel the more likes i get keeps me in youtube's algorithm which means the information you just saw in this video if it was helpful to you it can be helpful to somebody else and subscribe doesn't cost anything and if you end up not liking me you can always unsubscribe if you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms, YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey. And you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only $0.99. Cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99. And on Odyssey, it's $4. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always... Thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.